It seems that every developer these days is talking about GraphQL, but actually building a GraphQL-enabled front-end is much more difficult than it should be. Uh, first up, there's a mountain of libraries to choose from, and if somehow you do manage to whittle down choices in things like GraphQL clients, UI, uh, store state, code bundling, routing, CSS, server-side rendering, the list goes on and on, you then face with a mammoth task of getting everything to play nicely together and to slot together into a working application. And that's very difficult to do in an industry that moves so fast that documentation is often terse or missing completely, or there are major changes between different versions. Uh, which is why I've created React QL. React QL is a starter kit that uses the exact tech stack that I use every single day in production, uh, but more importantly, it wires everything together for you. So you have the boilerplate out of the box and it just works. And this is going to save you days, possibly even weeks of the code that you would normally write at the very start in, in an application so that you can just focus on just your application code and skip the tedious setup. It's free, it's completely open source. You go over to uh, reactql.org and there's tons of documentation as well that will help you out. So what I'd like to do in this video is just walk through some of the high level features that you get out of the box and any further features you can actually explore deeper into the rabbit hole that is documentation, you'll find individual videos next to some of the major concepts that will walk you through examples on how to wire this. Uh, the intention of uh, React QL is to walk you through every step of the process, not just give you some boilerplate code and let you figure it out yourself, uh, but get you very, very quickly building a GraphQL backed application. So what you're getting out of the box is two modes. Uh, the first of which is development and development is intended to run on your local machine. You're getting features like hot code reload, uh, you've got environment awareness, you've got the ability to speak directly to GraphQL servers, and uh, to run that, you just spawn one command, npm start, and it's going to run on port 8080. And you can see a few of the concepts at play on the main page that is fired back to you. Now let's check out some of this stuff. If we go over to Atom, I've got this starter kit loaded. I'll just move this to the side. And let's say you want to make some changes to any of these components first of all. I'll scroll down to this message component. I'll just say, hello world, and I'll go ahead and save that. And you'll see here in a second or two that this is updated for you automatically. And this is just one of several features that go much further than uh, features you'd find commonplace in other starter kits. So we have hot code reloading here, but it's done in such a way that it preserves your store state of your application. So you see, even though we're making a, a change directly to a React component, and it's quite deep in the code hierarchy, uh, that's not messing with any application state. You can still click around roots, for example, and uh, go ahead and make a, another change. I'll say hello world too. And despite being on a route that is controlled by uh, by React router and uses Redux store state, um, we're still able to see those changes with no refreshes in the browser. So that's very, very cool. Uh, the same also is true, not just with uh, JavaScript code, but also with things like CSS. So you'll see CSS has uh, post CSS and CSS next capabilities out of the box. So you can use things like variables or code nesting and things like that, more advanced features that are not yet present in today's CSS uh, rendering engines. But we can go ahead and make changes, let's say, to the font size here, and that gets updated for us. So even styles are going to get pushed down without affecting anything else on the page. As mentioned, we've got environment awareness. So this means that we can do uh, sort of dynamic inclusions of NPM modules that make sense in particular environments. So on the browser, for example, it's commonplace to want to manipulate the DOM. Of course, you don't get the DOM on the server side, so you can just, in a simple if block, uh, you can specify that this code should only run in the browser or only run in the server if you want to take advantage of some uh, server-based APIs that are not in the client. Very, very easy to do. It's also got uh, isomorphic code splitting, again, something you don't see a lot in other starter kits. So you can actually uh, do things like have dynamic routes. These, these are all declarative uh, routes that are loaded uh, with this one bundle, which is why we're able to click around and get that sort of single page application effect. But if you have some code that's quite heavy that you don't want to pull down on the initial render, you can easily do code splitting, and that is automatically going to work out of the box on the server as well, which again is, is something you don't often get. If we take a look at the uh, the source code, uh, you can see if we hit refresh, and let's check out the X, uh, XHR, you can see that we're doing some 
calls to network interfaces and such for the graph call service. So this is working directly from the browser. You're able to call out GraphQL endpoints that exist elsewhere directly from the browser without involving the server all in development mode, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. And we've also got access to Redux dev tools. So uh, we've got a custom implementation of Redux stores. So we've got the out-the-box stores that the Apollo GraphQL client provides us, but on top of that, we can easily manage our own application state globally. And you'll see that we've got things like rewind and uh, time travel and the ability to deeply inspect um, our store state there. We've also got access to the Apollo uh, DevTools extension as well. So if we run a query like this, which is the exact same query that's being pulled here, you'll see information being pulled back from a GraphQL endpoint despite only running this in the browser. Now speaking of running this in the browser, if we take a look at the uh, source code in, um, in development, you can see it's very skeletal. We've basically got a vendor browser uh, and browser bundle uh, which is uh, built for us automatically. So vendor includes all of the third-party stuff that you're going to be pulling from NPM and it knows automatically that, that stuff is in the node modules directly, directory and it will produce a separate bundle for you. And then we've got browser, which is all of our custom code. If we check that out, you'll see this is the, the full source code. If we head back to development, you'll see we've got full source maps as well. So we can open, for example, our style sheet or our JavaScript code, and uh, we can really deeply inspect parts of our code. So if I actually look at this, and we've got things like config files and such, you'll see the originals. So you're able to jump to specific lines of code, and any errors from the console will reference those lines of code specifically. So it's, it's very, very easy to uh, debug in production. Now, by contrast, let's check out production mode. So uh, what production mode is, is intended to do is build for you a distribution bundle that's intended to be hosted in a Docker instance or directly on a cloud provider or somewhere else. And it has a built-in web server that's there to serve all of your web traffic, all of your front-end web traffic, as well as produce a full HTML render of the page at that point in time. So users get a very, very snappy experience. You can see here that it says environment production, and it's running in the browser. Now, this is where it gets cool. If we check out the uh, source code, you'll see this is a complete application. So despite having source code that targets the browser, it runs entirely in the server in this mode and allows the client, the browser, to continue from the point that the server finishes. We get lots of cool things here. We've got a head section that we can declare uh, at any stage in our React hierarchy. And so if we have, let's say, a dynamic title where we need to go off and pull some information from a database or a GraphQL endpoint, we're able to do that and then wire that up um, into the final render. And that's pretty simple to do. If we check out Atom, go back to our app source, scroll down, you'll see this, this is just one component where we can add in things like meta tags and titles and things like that. We also have a style sheet there that's built for us. So if we click on that and check this out, you can see this is completely minified, all white space removed. We've got code dedupe. Uh, we're combining tags. Uh, we also have this concept of hashed tags, or what we call local styles. So if we check out something like this, uh, let's say we wanted to add in a, um, a specific color to, to um, the, the paragraph text or what have you, we're able to jump over to the CSS code and let's say we want color red here, and we'll just go ahead and save that. And uh, this will be local to this particular component, or it will be if we wrap this in a, a specific um, a specific class name. So let's check out let's see, logo, we'll do a background color of yellow. And uh, that's only going to appear within logo. If we actually inspect that, you'll see that we get this class name that's completely hashed. So despite having this, uh, this plain English class name in, uh, in development, you'll see in the uh, distributed version of that that we get this, uh, this hash class, uh, class name. So that's not going to clash uh, with any namespaces that are set up elsewhere in your code, which means then uh, that it's very easy to create styles that don't bleed out into the global scope. If you do wish for them to bleed out, I'll just go ahead and change this back, then all you do is just wrap it in this uh, global block, and so for example, global HTML here will spill out then to, uh, to global styles. So you get all that out of the box, as well as concatenation of styles and just general minification. You've got uh, vendor prefixes added automatically, and this is provided to you by CSS Next and Post CSS. And it's very easy to go ahead and 
add your own stuff as well. In addition to that, we have SAS support, so that will run through Node SAS first if you want that to, uh, to compile CSS files, um, uh, sorry, SCSS files or SAS files. It will do that, but it will also then pipeline that through post CSS as a final step. So you get the exact same workflow process. Uh, looking back at our source code, uh, you'll see that we also get a full dump of the HTML, and this is completely root aware as well. So we're on the about page at the moment, which is why it says change root about. If we go ahead and just look at the uh, the root of that, then you'll see that this HTML changes to reflect that. So we're getting the initial render back that's specific to that one root. So this is completely isomorphic, and what it means is then in production you get the instant render of the initial page, but also the client can continue on clicking through roots. Uh, without any round trips to the service, that's really nice. Uh, we have this uh, custom state that's fired back down from Redux. So we've got Apollo there with our queries and all of our information. And by the way, that's completely embedded as well. So we're actually awaiting the response back from uh, GraphQL before we render the uh, the entire chain back down to the server. But in addition to using the Apollo client for that, you can easily add in your own Redux reducers for other parts of your application. And that state is dehydrated down, it's sent back down to the browser, and then it's injected back into your application. So you don't need to double up on things like API calls uh, out to external resources. In fact, if we check out the network tab and hit refresh, you'll see that there are no uh, any external uh, AJAX requests back out to any service because we've already uh, left it to the server to do the heavy lifting there, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so those are just a few of the high-level concepts that uh, ReactQL provides you with out of the box. I encourage you to delve into the documentation to see how it all slots together. Uh, it's neatly organized. We have these different folders. I'll just give you a very, very quick tour. So for the most part, all you're going to need to do is look in source and app and just basically start overwriting the, uh, the information that's already in there. And uh, that's good enough to, to spawn a, uh, a new project. Uh, you can jump into Kit and you can make changes directly to the entry points for the browser and the server. There's a built-in Koa web server. And you'll notice uh, a theme throughout all of these files is there's tons of documentation. I, I pretty much hold your hand and walk you through every single stage of what's happening in, uh, in all of these entry points. So if you want to change anything specific or you need to know why something is done in a particular way, uh, usually there's, there's documentation to accompany that and make it very, very easy to make changes. We use Webpack config to create these uh, these Webpack files, so you can see very simply what's uh, what is the base configuration and how we then extend that in things like development mode for the browser or production. How we do the same thing on the server. And by the way, we're developing and building a Webpack bundle for the server side as well. So it means that in your code you can do cool things such as uh, import CSS files directly or logo files, images directly and all of that stuff will just work even on the server. And we also have a separate workflow and, and build pipeline for images and for static assets. So uh, you're able to use JSON files, you're able to use images, things like that, and that's all gonna get crunched down for you um, in development. If we head over to the terminal, what I'm going to do is just uh, jump in the distribution folder and I'll open that up so we can see it. Um, uh, I'll check that out in Atom. So we see that we've got this uh, this distribution folder. We have server.js, which is a bundle that's created for, for us. Uh, we have a public directory as well. This becomes the entry point for our web server. And you'll see that we've got um, a browser asset there. If we double click this, you can see that this is very highly minified. This is just our own custom code, as well as a, a separate vendor bundle with all of our NPM in there. So that makes it very quick to build. Uh, because a vendor bundle typically doesn't change that often unless we're using uh, additional third-party NPM packages, it means the browser can be generated very, very quickly. We have an assets folder with CSS, so we've got our CSS style sheets as well as our images that have been crunched down and minified for us. And you'll note next to all of the files we have these GZ uh, versions of them as well. This is gzip. And what our built-in web server will do is if a request is made to this file, it will first look for a GZ file and it will send that down the wire instead if it finds it. So this is basically gzip compressed. It can save 50 to 70% of bandwidth for uh, most file types. And because it's only doing it one time, you're actually saving CPU cycles of having to generate these uh, gzip versions on every request. 
So a lot of the finer details are, are, are taken care of for you in React QL, and that's really the emphasis of this starter kit. Get out of your way and just do all of your, the boilerplate for you so you can just focus on writing your application code. If you run into any issues, just go ahead and click View Source and use the GitHub Issue Tracker. I'll get back to you as soon as possible to try and fix that stuff. Or you can reach out to me directly through uh, uh, contact information that's available on documentation. Any questions, do let me know. Otherwise, enjoy.